Are you stuck? This in is a the Worship Team that you Training can't Podcast. Now, here's your host, Brandon Dempsey. Hey, Worship Team's leaders and friends, thank you so much for subscribing to the Worship Team Training Podcast and for your support and attention. Welcome back. I should say, welcome me back. I welcome you back to the podcast. It's been a long time. And we've taken off for more than a month, which we never do. But hey, we all need a summer vacation and a summer break. I'm going to share with you later on what's been happening in our summer so far. But thank you for visiting worshipteentraining.com. And as always, be sure to check out wttu.co. That is our online membership. Um, I almost sounded Irish by that point. I didn't mean to do that, but that is our on-demand membership for worship teams and worship leaders. You can catch these postings also on the very brand new soon and coming worshipteentraining.com. That's right. We're redesigning the website, and we will be launching that very, very, very soon. Catch also the Worship Team Training on Instagram with our postings, our graphics, everything else to encourage you and your step for following Jesus and leading people in worship. Watch our shows on our Facebook page like this coming Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central. That's what we do every week. Uh, This coming week, we're doing something different. We're actually going to be doing a brown bag Wednesday first. So I will give you more news about that at the end of the broadcast. Also follow our Bible highlights on YouVersion Worship Team Training, Brandon Dempsey. Just search me there. You can find my highlights, my comments, and also our devotionals here at Worship Team Training. Interact and follow us on Snapchat and Twitter. Our handle is, or address rather, is at Worship T. T. That's at Worship, capital T, capital T. Thank you so much for the brand new members that have come into our university. We are excited to have you guys. Uh, we have a new church that came out uh, from New Bronzeville, a redemptive church. The whole team came out. Pastor Pam, big shout out to her and her worship team. Woo-woo! They came out to be members in our university. Uh, join us if you haven't. We're having new people join every day. We're also ministering to churches out in Mississippi and they too will be coming into our membership and we welcome them as well as you and also thank you guys for following us as mentioned on snapchat because we have some friends that come on board to follow our uh, daily things that you'll see me come up with uh, talk about encourage share so we invite you to do that again that's at worship tt also be sure to sign up for the monday morning digest you can get that at worshipteentraining.com on the homepage pop up Uh, Just be sure to check that out, and you will get our newsletter and free devotional for first-time sign-ups. So how about we jump into it? Again, I'm going to be going into later on the event calendar this week. We have our Wednesday brown bag, and Thursday, uh, before we get to Thursday, we actually have uh, our—what's it? We have our— Wednesday brown bag at 11 a.m. And then at 12, the next hour, Grant Norsworthy, our webinar with him. And then we have Rob still coming up on Thursday. I'll give you more information about that. Let's jump right into it. The word of the week is, here is your word of the week, transition. Definition, the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. It could also be a passage and a piece of writing that smoothly connects two topics or sections to each other. Uh, In terms of music, it can be a momentary modulation from one key or song to another. Here's your verse of the week. Coming from Romans 6, 13, do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness question of the week how do you deal with transitions before they deal with you so i also started out the very the very beginning of this broadcast if you are stuck in a moment i love that song from you too uh, a lot of great memories from that album all that you can't leave behind the question is yeah you're stuck in this moment but what's your transition what's your out how do you deal with it before it begins with before it deals with you. That's why I love Romans 6.13 because we are not to offer any part of ourselves to sin because it's that transition that God has already given us from death to life. Because of Jesus, we have his righteousness 
and we have salvation in him. For those of us who have chosen to follow and believe in Jesus, he becomes our transition. And therefore, why would we want to extend that to another form of evil or unrighteousness or bad judgment or ill decision making? So here's the deal. Transitions are inevitable. I mean, we think about the real world change. We encounter transitions in real life. Not just in a worship service, moving from song to song, but moving from life moment to life moment, even especially in the times that are unfavorable. Because it's within those moments, we don't know, we don't know how to get from point A to point B. I mean, the deal is we feel stuck. And knowing how to journey through that can make all the difference. There is a common connection to those of us who know, and that's confidence. Our worship team training university members know that when it comes to making transitions, confidence can make you or break you. But take courage. Jesus said, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. He is always with us no matter how we may feel about the situation, the set list, or the setback, God never leaves us. He is even closer than what we realize. So in this moment, are you moving closer to him? Now, just to back that up a second, when we talk about the word move, that's what we have been doing this summer. That's how we've been spending our time. We have had to say the bitter, sweet uh, goodbye or see you later to our present church because we're relocating from Cypress, Texas, which is Northwest Houston, to Austin. And we are joining a new family, a new church, a new place to live, and efforts to do many things. We're taking care of our aging family, our uh, loved ones, and it's hard work. And my wife and I did not expect this change to happen this quickly. But that's a lot like life. We find ourselves in these moments where we don't know how it came to be, or maybe we did see it on the horizon, and bam, it's already here. How do you deal with it? So for us, you know, looking from uh, places to work, places to live, how do we get from here to there kind of thing? And we find ourselves, and my wife and family and I, we found ourselves in this transition of, okay, God, we're just going to trust you step by step. Now, For some of you, this may be a very light-hearted topic. You may be going something through uh, something else that's much deeper than this, and I totally relate with that because I still, we walked this life together, and I've been through my tough moments and my fractures and my bone-breaking experiences, but they're all the same in the sense of there has to be a transition to get out of here. There has to be a way to get unstuck. There has to be a way for us to see Jesus in these moments to moments. This is what Romans 6.13 is all about, that even as we travel through this journey, when we try to find our bridge, we do not offer ourselves as a sin. I mean, we don't offer our, sorry, we don't offer ourselves as an instrument to sin. And it's not about being perfect. I mean, just even... As I'm speaking, I'm I'm just coming to you just being real. I mean, these are the words that I'm just saying from my heart. As I put together these podcasts, I pray deeply that whatever that I say, that God is using it effectively in your life. And I don't know where you are with leading worship, leading your team. Maybe you're not in a team. Maybe you're not leading worship. But maybe you're at this point of life where God is calling you to make this change, but you just don't know how to get there. And friends, I'm telling you that the only way to get there is by allowing God to do what he desires to do already within you. And that's to fill you with his compassion, with his love. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're in a time, my wife and I right now are in between cities and we're waiting for some pieces to fall together to get in the right place, and we're praying that God makes it happen. And, you know, that's just it. We have to 
pray, walk, and trust. It's not about our abilities. And I think we we tend to focus so much on the things that we think that we can do or that we attempt to do. Even in the, the, the example of leading worship, you know, it's not all up to us. It's not about us getting behind the microphone or the instrument and thinking that, yeah, the service starts with me. Now, recently, as I mentioned, Mississippi, I was just up there in Potomac, uh, an awesome town, small country a church town working with Green Valley Baptist Church. Shout out to you guys. And as I was doing the weekend workshop and just letting them know this very reality that worship does not begin with you. Worship begins and ends with God. Now, if you've been to one of our worship team training workshops, you'll know that I speak about this a lot. And if you follow our podcasts like this or university, you know that I talk about this quite a bit. And if not, this is the first time you're hearing this, then good for you. Because I believe we put so much pressure on ourselves that we don't see the biblical reality of what God has already done. And what is that? Well, he began creation. God is beginning and the end. He is Alpha Omega beginning and last. And these are things that I cover in our workshop. But the point is, is that if God is the initiator and creator of all things, then isn't it true and right for us to say that God is also the beginning of worship? So worship, therefore worship, begins with God and it ends with God. It doesn't start with us. So what about that transition? What about from the point that we pick up our instrument or the microphone to the very end of the service? What about... From the very beginning, when you were on your sickbed and God, Jesus, came to heal you to say, take up your bed, now walk. And now you are to get from that transition or something else in your life. How do you deal with that transition before it begins with it deals with you? So it's an everyday trust factor. So when it even comes to worship leading, thinking about that illustration again, does does fear mount up in you when you have to go into the next song or the next key and you don't know how? Or maybe you're not fully prepared before you show up. Or if you are, before that voice hits the microphone or before you strike that note, how are you going to do it? And are you going to do it with just yourself in mind, or are you doing it with the love of God flowing through you? So understand this, that when you're leading worship, guys, and as you're walking through this week, you need to realize something that's larger than yourself, and that's, yes, the Lord Jesus. And it's also your people, the people of your church, the people who you don't know yet in your community that are about to come to your church. You don't know what transitions are going on in their lives. So what are you doing to make the most of your life for the sake of others? What are you doing right now, worship leader, worship team member, tech person, pastor, whatever you may be? How is God using you? Or are you, I guess the better question is, are you allowing God to use you in the way that he desires? Because see, for some of us, When we talk about getting from point A to point B, some of us may still be hiding behind point A, and we don't know just how to move. But here's the truth, and this is where I find my refuge. God sees it all. He knows it all, and he still loves it all. He loves us all. He doesn't love our sin, but he loves us. So with this in mind, There is nothing, as what Romans tells us too, there's nothing can separate us from the love of God. There is nothing that is beyond his grasp. Neither is his precious love that is for us, that desires and is able to come in and heal our brokenness. So are you willing to be clean? Just as the man with leprosy inquired from his faith to Jesus to make him well. That, that comes from Matthew 8, 2. But day-to-day life can be difficult. Ministry is a challenge. There's no doubt. But is that all there is? And what are we missing? How do we move past this? And where do we find our transition? Well, guys, we find our transition in the life bridge of Jesus. It's not brain surgery. It's not rocket science. 
instead of worrying about how God sees you, just worship him right where you're at and let him come and find you. Doesn't he already know your state? So then why do we struggle about the need to appear, quote unquote, all right or perfect before God? What is so wrong with letting him come and find you as you really are? Maybe that is the problem. It's not God, but it can be our view of God and even more so our view of ourselves. I know if I see myself in the mirror one way and I may not like that image, two times would that image be magnified and or 10 times, 20 times magnified in God's image. And so if I see something that I don't like about myself, how much more is God not going to like it either? Okay, let's stop right there. But isn't he the same God who out of all creation made the planets and stars and universe, he still made you and he still loves you no matter what? I know that when I look at my wife, she loves me no matter the imperfections that I may see in the mirror. She loves me anyway. And when you can learn to allow the love of God to to flow through you and to love yourself, even to love yourself in an unconditional way in the same way that God loves you, man, that is where you find worship. Now, I know in worship it's difficult to let loose your praise and you're worried about maybe how other people may be watching. I don't know if your church lifts hands or uh, they hop over pews or whatever. Maybe it's just like uh, everyone's just a, a standstill marching band. Who knows? But, you know, not being confident in who you are even as a worshiper can affect the way that you lead worship. It can even be awkward, as you already know, if you're unsure of where you're going or how you're getting there. And it's really difficult to be part of a solid team if you're constantly second-guessing yourself or let alone your own securities rule over you. So here's where I say let God rule over you, not the insecurities, but let God rule over those insecurities. Allow him to come and find, heal, forgive, and live through you. And in your time with God, you may find this helpful to dialogue with God by asking him these kind of questions. You can say these things in your own quiet time. And I ask you, do you have a do you have a quiet time or worship time with the Lord? So here are some questions that you can take note and bring before God. You can ask some questions like this. Where is my end point? God, how do I begin this journey? How do I just let go and allow you to come do it through me? What do I need to do, Jesus, to let you be my bridge? Where in my life do I need healing? How can I adapt the joy that you want to give me to the playing, singing, and leading that I do at my church? And to whom in my family and community do I need to share this with? Transition. It's about how you manage change spiritually, emotionally, and musically. So don't be afraid not to know all the answers. Just find them. Those are wise words that was spoken by a pastor friend of mine today on the phone. I love that. He just said, don't be afraid to know all the answers. Just find them. So I share that with you. And don't rely also on your position in the church or in the worship team. Titles don't carry respect. Respect is developed. It's not given. It's established. It's, it's an earned trust by others. And seeking how you get from point A to point B, do it based upon how you feel of why you need to earn it. Or maybe I'll, I'll say it in a different way. And seeking how to get from point A to point B, don't do it based upon how you feel that you may deserve it, but on how you need to earn it. Do the hard work. Be the soldier that Jesus designed you to be. Make your transition through Jesus. And you may walk with a certain amount of education or experience into the room, but you have to earn things over time. You have to live among your people to experience life together and to live together. Then you can earn it, and that's where you'll find the road 
of your transition is when you come into that intersect, when you say to God, I can't, but I know you can. So guys, just in this podcast that you've heard, if you like this kind of personal and customized attention, would you like this kind of customized attention to your entire worship team or maybe to your worship leadership? Well, look at our websites, worshipteentraining.com slash workshops and also worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring. Our workshops are fun weekends that you can experience intuitive and creative ways to step up your skill and heart for your worship team. And we also do the same thing in our leadership mentoring program. Best of all, we come to you. Hey guys, I want to point your attention members to our calendar coming up this week. I mentioned this at the top of the broadcast. Uh, Be on the lookout for the 15th, yours truly. I'll be doing a Brownback special at 11 a.m. talking about transitions, how to transition from one song to the other. Uh, Five simple keys, ways that you can make those transitions effective musically. Also, on that same day, Grant Norsworthy, the next hour at 12 p.m., He's going to bring it, talking about bringing unity to technicians and musicians, the transition between both those groups and how to make a one organized, loving ministry. Great stuff. On the 16th at 11 a.m., Rob Still is going to be talking about worship actions and attitudes. So you don't want to miss that. Author Rob Still is going to be joining us the 16th at 11 a.m. So become a member at WTTU.co. And you'll get all the webinars for free, um, our articles, everything else. You can check that out. Uh, I mean, we are here to aspire to excellence, to elevate your skill, transform your ministry. So we encourage you guys to try us out. Our seven-day download of articles, videos, webinars, unlimited eBooks. Um, you can download all of that at wttu.co slash FTR7. Again, that's F as in Frank, T as in Tom, R as in Robert, the number seven. WTTU.co slash FTR, and you'll find more about that information there. Be sure to, again, um, visit our events page to see what else is coming and a workshop that may, that may be coming to your town as well back at our worshipteentraining.com site. And if you like this podcast, I humbly ask that you give us a five-star rating on iTunes or iHeartRadio, and even better, share this podcast with a friend. We hope that you're encouraged from this word of the week to be transformed for the leading of worship. And and remember, friends, you don't need to be perfect. Just let God transform the way you live life and the way that you lead worship. I'm Brandon Dempsey of worshipteentraining.com and Worship Team Training University. See you next time. This has been a Worship Team Training broadcast and digital production with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Worship Team Training provides live workshops and online resources to help inspire, create, and transform the leading of worship. We'll see you again right here on worshipteamtraining.com.